The technology that I'm going to show you in this video is going to change video games forever, starting probably in the next 12 months or so. Now, for those of you who do not know who I am, I run a game development studio. We have games on Steam, many millions of downloads, and I am also currently studying at university, finishing my graduate degree in data science and machine learning. And at those two things, the fact that I own a game development studio and I am studying machine learning is likely the reason why I am even able to mess around with this kind of technology and show it to you today. Now, the technology that I am going to be showing you today is a prototype system that I myself have put together. It does utilize Unreal Engine. It utilizes some other tools which are either open source uh, or just developed by other companies. I didn't make Unreal Engine. But the system that I have put together for this, I have created myself. And I was inspired to create this system by previous videos that I've created where I would show off different post-process presets for different kinds of games. I don't know how many of you guys have tinkered around with ENB or similar third-party post-process presets where you can take any game and apply post-process effects and make it look completely different. In some cases, you can take a game like Grand Theft Auto V and then make it look absolutely photorealistic. It's quite incredible. If you haven't checked out all of the different third-party post-process plugins for video games, you really should. There's some really cool things that you can achieve with that stuff. But since I am in game development, and I'm a YouTuber, and I'm also studying machine learning, I started to wonder, what would happen if you were to create a post-process effect, a post-process layer, using generative AI? Because there's lots of AI models out there, like mid-journey, and even video-based generative models, where you can create footage out of nothing. But in a lot of cases, the footage that it creates is kind of weird, or, you know, like people have seven fingers instead of six or whatever. But what if instead of generating brand new video, you instead used it as a post-process layer where it took the in-game renders, passed it through a post-processor with a generative AI model translating that footage, and then output the result. And I don't think I was quite prepared for how incredible the results of this were going to be. And for this demo, for this technical demonstration that I've put together of this system that I've created, we are going to be utilizing Unreal Engine and a couple of other tools that Unreal Engine has available, like MetaHuman as the tool for creating the in-game render. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like after we apply the generative AI post-process effect. And just watch. So this is the standard MetaHuman editor in Unreal Engine. It looks pretty good. And I can actually just use my camera to get motion capture of my face and apply it in Engine, which is awesome. The iPhone camera has a bunch of sensors and fancy stuff where it can do depth perception and get all of the data points it needs in order to fully animate my face, even with my headset on and everything. Now, inside of Unreal Engine, you can make this look pretty good, but there's always that aspect that feels like you're still watching a video game. But when you apply the AI filter, that's when everything gets ridiculous. This has now gone from a pretty good looking Unreal Engine project to something that is more photorealistic than I think people could imagine when they're even watching an Unreal Engine demo. When you actually see something that is more photorealistic, it's very difficult to go back. And that is what these filters can do. Now, in order to create these renders, I am still using the Unreal Engine Render Movie Queue. So this is not in real time yet, but it's going to be. I don't know if 
you saw Mudahar's recent video where he showcased a piece of technology that I've been watching as well, where there was an AI generative model that was trained on Counter-Strike, not even a post-process effect. So keep in mind, the version that Mudahar showed off wasn't even using in-game footage. It was generating images and video from nothing where you could play a full version of Counter-Strike at 10 frames per second only using an AI generative model. So it has already been proven fairly recently that you can run generative AI video models in real time at at least 10 FPS or so. But using AI for a post-process effect would be even less resource intensive which means that you could probably get to a point where that runs at 30 FPS, 60 FPS, and when the, I don't know, NVIDIA 8090 comes out in the coming years, we will get to a point where you are going to be able to have AI in-game post-process effects applied running in real time. And when that happens... I mean, could you imagine playing Skyrim with these kinds of graphics? Could you imagine playing really any game with this level of realism? It's absolutely insane. Now, I am still finishing my graduate degree. I am still making my game. But the things that I have been seeing while I have been doing my studies, while I have been working more in the games industry and seeing how AI models are impacting game development, what I am showing you here isn't even the craziest thing that I have seen that I'm probably going to show you in the coming weeks. So if you want to stick around for that, definitely click that subscribe button and enable notifications if you want to see when I upload those videos. And besides that, as far as this system that I have created here, currently I am not interested in releasing this system to the public yet, but if you would like to know how I built this and you would like to know more about the technology behind this, you can click the link down in the description and potentially get access to my project files and other information so you could learn how to build this post-processed effect yourself. I feel like there's going to be a company that's going to implement this into a video game and they're going to make millions and millions of dollars in the coming months. There is absolutely an application for this technology. I just don't think that game studios have wrapped their head around it yet. But the first studio that does, they're going to break through the industry and make an insane amount of money. So let me know down in the comments, do you think this is interesting? Do you not think that this is interesting? Is this impressive to you? Is this not impressive to you? If this could be used in a video game, what video games would you like to see this system be used in. And besides that, if you're a company and you want to reach out to me and get information about this system, please let me know. I'm sure there's lots of other studios that would like to figure out how to apply this to their own video games. And if you want to stick around for my future videos, because I'm telling you, this isn't even the craziest thing I've been working on or I have seen that I'm going to be showing, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to learn how to do this for yourself, if you want to learn how to build these kinds of pipelines and use AI as a generative post-process effect, click the link down in the description and you can get access to all of the information that you're going to need in order to learn how to build this for yourself. Thanks so much for watching guys and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.